If you're not regenerating your soil, then you're losing out on one of the major benefits of growing your own produce. Imagine soil fertility is like a kitchen pantry. A well-stocked pantry provides all the ingredients and resources necessary to make healthy meals. In the same way, your soil's health will lead to nutrient-rich, diverse, and strong crop yields that are more resistant to pests and harsh weather. Let me show you three levels of soil regeneration from beginner to expert, and we'll start with the basics. The first level is all about setting your foundation, which means the composition of your soil. We can easily test our soils by using a jar test. The jar test is going to show us the balance of clay, silt, and sand in our soil. The jar test is also really easy to do. The first thing we do is dig 8 to 12 inches down into the soil and fill our jar about halfway up. Then we add water about 3 quarters full and put in a little bit of dish soap. We shake it up for a few minutes and let it sit for 24 hours and that's it. As the material settles over a 24 hour period, first we're going to see the gravels and the sand drop out, the heaviest, largest particles. Next, the silts are going to settle out and finally the clays will settle out last. So what do the results of this jar test actually mean? Well, in simple terms, if we have really sandy soils, that means water is going to drain right through them, and so are the nutrients. We can think about a bathtub without a plug. If we have really heavy clay soils, it's the opposite. It's like a bathtub with the plug in, and those water and nutrients are going to stick around, but may actually create compaction and stagnation. With these imbalances, there's a really easy fix, and it's the same for whatever type of soil we have. The best thing for your soil is to add organic matter in the form of compost, mulch, and worm castings. Simply adding these types of amendments will help our soils retain water, have more available nutrients, and increase the amount of habitat available for soil microorganisms. And I'll go over how to make great compost in a future video. You can buy certain things to amend your soil, or you can let the plants do the work. These little green guys are going to be working with your soil 24-7 and therefore they're one of the best ways to let the land start to heal itself. There are many ways in which plants can help build our soil. For example, this plant right here is called the lupin. It's a nitrogen fixing plant. What that means is that this plant pulls nitrogen from its environment with the help of some special bacteria and makes it available for other plants. One of the most important things that plants do to help regenerate our soils is they release what are called root exudates. These root exudates literally feed the soil microbiology. We want to have plants with different types of structures, different shapes and sizes, both above ground and below ground. When we look at it from the below ground perspective, we want roots at all the different layers of the soil, from very shallow rooting species all the way to deep tap rooting species. What happens within that is we get root exudates being released at all the different levels, and we also get nutrient uptake from different levels in the soil. A couple other ways that we can work with plants to regenerate our soil include cover cropping in our vegetable gardens and annual cropping systems, or growing living ground covers in our perennial food forests. Within both of those types of systems, we can do what's called chop and drop, and that's literally taking plants' excess biomass and dropping it back on the ground and allowing that to feed the soil. Here at Morningside, we're gonna be doing all of the above in order to work with plants to help us regenerate our soil and for the most part, that's going to be happening inside of our vegetable garden, which is surrounded by a food forest. Integration with livestock is a more advanced step, but I can't help but recommend it to every landowner I meet because it brings so many benefits. In the last section, we talked about chopping and dropping plants as a way of adding nutrients back to our soil. Well, if this same plant was eaten by an animal and manured back onto the soil, we would have twice or more the amount of available nutrients going back into our soil. Animals like cows are essentially mobile biodigesters. Their gut is essentially a giant compost machine. The diversity of microbiology in their gut is very beneficial when it's added back to the soil. Approximately 90% of what these animals eat and drink is given back to the land in the form of biology-rich manures. The reason why so many places in the Canadian prairies and even where we are here in Morningside have such great topsoil is because of ancient herds of bison and how they used to graze the land. And we want to mimic that same pattern with how we manage our animals here at Morningside. Some places where bison used to graze had up to 20% soil carbon before the introduction of conventional agriculture. Now, 
most of our lands hover around 3% soil carbon. The point here is that livestock themselves are not the problem. It's the way that we design and manage the systems of how they interact with the landscape. Here at Morningside, we're going to be mimicking how animals used to live in this ecosystem and in doing so, regenerating our soils very quickly. The list truly goes on and while it takes some work to get started, it all just starts to make so much sense once you do. Well-designed systems will start to become more self-managing and self-maintaining over time, so reducing the amount of work you need to do on your property while you're regenerating your soil. We're going to be implementing a livestock area immediately next to our 20,000 square foot main garden and food forest which we're standing in and is being constructed right now. This will allow us to achieve all the benefits of livestock integration as well. By prioritizing these regenerative practices that support soil health and fertility, we can maintain productive and sustainable agricultural systems that will benefit the environment and future generations. Your gardens will start to regenerate and become more and more healthy as time goes on. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this interesting and informative, please give us a like and a follow here. And also check out our newsletter where we share weekly information about the best regenerative practices in the world.